Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. For anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode, we're going to be featuring a Ho-O team as we continue on with our VGC Series 8 content. Ho-O, one of the Pokemon that we haven't actually featured on the channel yet, which I'm a little bit surprised about, and it's nice to finally be able to kind of feature a team build around Ho-O, the fire and flying type. It's quite unique to the restricted pool of Pokemon that we've got, and it's kind of one of those restricted. It kind of stands alone from the other ones where it has the ability if you're able to remove certain threats to it to create like wind conditions just on its own because a lot of pokemon do struggle to hit it for super effective damage it's got a lot of issues though obviously a big weaknesses to electric to water to big prevalent kind of forces within the format at the minute so you need to be able to deal with those quite nicely and I really do feel like Lapras is quite a nice partner for it now a lot of the times you're going to be maxing Lapras so it means you're not maxing Ho or getting the most kind of optimal play out of it but at the same time with the screen support Ho can still perform when it's not maxed obviously doesn't have access to that speed control that you do have when you are maxed but on the other flip side of it Ho can then come in and act as your max mon and you're not relying too much on the Lapras if you don't need to but they kind of pair quite nicely together obviously got that common rock weakness but we've got plenty in the team to kind of deal with the rock threats you know things like landers don't want to go up against lapras and other rock threats that we're going to see nilego things like that obviously we've got good checks for those throughout the team so i feel like the team's quite nice hope you enjoyed today's episode as always there will be a poker piss down below in the description if you want to check that out the details try it out on showdown then be my guest and if you stick around till the end of the episode as always we'll be throwing up the rental team after we've had a couple of games and kind of pilot the team and show you how it functions so like i say hope you enjoyed today's episode friends let's get into it and see who our first match is going to be against today <laughs> okay up first today we have a team of charizard tokol calyrex ice rider raichu whimsicott and dragapult so an interesting build you've got kind of sun and ice here a uh, trick room mod from the calyrex you would imagine trick rooms on there maybe trick room whimsicott you can't ever discount that it doesn't get access to it and then good trick room support with the tall call but other than that you've got kind of a really fast mod with the charizard uh good support from the raichu uh providing kind of support from uh opposing electric type threats and things like that and dragapult an interesting choice as well um i think ho has got a really good matchup here you know uh in general even if the trick room goes up uh we've got an incredibly good matchup uh we've got to utilize uh intimidate support well but i think like do we just lead urshifu uh ho -Oh, because like one of the things we could potentially do here is um pressure the dragapult which i could imagine maybe leading uh from my opponent's side of the field the other thing is raichu as well raichu gives us a nice option with uh, fake out support if the whimsicott does come out uh especially against the charizard um i think what we'll do is we will bring urshifu and we will bring landorus uh do we need anything else Nah, i think we'll be all right with those lander is here going to play a big part you know against the fire core anyway with the assault vest gives us a little bit of support there they've got a really good check to it in the, the color x ice rider and it's not something we can kind of underestimate but if we can get our sacred fires going maybe get some burns on the board it will help us a bunch so let's see how we kick off in this first one um he's kind of like hybrid fire type teams are, are always kind of awkward to play against um but we are going to see calyrex and dragapult i wonder if there's I, I do suspect something like um i like switch here from the dragapult 100 you know <sighs> so we could just max and then or we could just sacred fire into into the Calyrex, you know. Uh, we go max airstream, get a speed boost, and then we'll uh, probably not outrun the Dragapult. But max flares not a bad option as well. I could just, I just have this feeling that we're gonna see an ally switch, you know. I really do. I'm gonna play to it. Actually, I am gonna play to it, and I'm gonna nuzzle into the Calyrex slot. Ah, oh, we're not going to do it. Okay, well, let's see. Let's hope that we see an ally switch. I, I think we will, you know. The other thing is we could potentially see Trick Room. But 
like going along the lines of getting a trick room up in front of a hall or i think you need to play the ally switch uh unless you've got something like reflect or dragon pull of course uh which I don't know how likely it is because Will O Wisp tends to be the, the more kind of leaned upon option. There we go. Okay. Here we go. Friends. It's what you get. It's what you get. <laughs> well, we get the eerie impulse off. I mean, we timed out with Raichu. So, regardless, it would have been nice to get the nuzzle off into the Dragapult like we kind of initially said. But this should be enough to get rid of the Calyrex here. Oh, it's not. Ha. Huh. Oh, so we're helping hand on right. You could be an option. And this is always a thing, you know, when you're playing a team, if you're looking at like options for uh, just improving the team in general, helping hand here would be like a big thing because now the trick rooms up, it makes things very difficult for us to kind of go forward. Although, is the Calyrex going to be able to pick up the knockout onto Hall? I don't think it will. Uh, and are we going to see another, are we going to see another ally switch? Potentially. Uh, but also potentially not. I need to switch in Landorus here. It's a little bit risky, always in front of a Calyrex, you know. Um, but if they go, well, they're going to have to go max ice into into Ho'o, you know. I think that's the their best option. Clear body protecting Dragapult from the Intimidate. Uh, help in hand. Okay. Glacial Lance coming out. Glacial Lance. So we will lose Landorus. And we take an absolute chunking from our uh, Ho'o, -Oh, which is not ideal. Uh, but we will be able to remove it this time from the field. Yeah, just getting back to the point is when you can identify things in matches and you're not like... Uh, it's quite useful when you think, right, okay, helping hand here would be the, the be the one option there. Just get rid of the Calyrex. And there'll be other similar situations where that kind of comes into play as well, you know. Um, and just kind of like realizing that really does help the team out a bunch. Okay, Torko going to come in. Ah, and Urshifu. Well, we got the Sash on, on Urshifu. Um, we can max Quake into Torko. Because we'll be able to take an attack with uh, Ho'o from the Torko. It's whether or not we want to kind of double up into Torko this turn. Or if you want to go after the Dragapult. Like, the Dragapult, to me, doesn't really worry me too much, you know? But it's always good to kind of get rid of it if we can. We could always sucker punch the Torkoal as well. Um, the issue with the Dragapult is I feel like it potentially could switch out. We don't want to time out here. So that's the other thing. Uh, what have you got in the back? Like, I don't think you've got anything. I think maybe we could just Wicked Blow into the Dragapult. The Sash allows us to kind of take at least one attack. Yeah. And then depending on what my opponent's last Pokemon is, uh, I'd imagine the Dragapult might be might be Sashed. Maybe Sashed? Who knows? Uh, Ho'o might be able to get at least a recover off before the Trick Room ends. Because we'll be able to take an Eruption or Heat Wave, whatever the, the, the Torko's got now. Wicked Blow, we just need to be able to uh, to take down the Dragapult because it's it's still going to be able to do a decent amount of damage. We do see the Cobra Berry on it there. It is able to take that Wicked Blow. It's a little bit unfortunate because Dragon Darts could come out here and cause us a few issues. Will-O-Wisp, okay. Oh, still not the worst. Uh, and Raichu going to be our last Pokemon to come in, which... isn't great but it's not the end of the world we do have fake out support that we can utilize i guess we're gonna have to take a turn to recover i think with hot oil and i think it's kind of better honestly that my opponent's got um yeah because i think what we do here is recover and then fake out into the Torkoal. Because I don't think you max the Torkoal at this point. I think whatever you've got in the back, something like Charizard, I think that's what you, you max this next turn. So, um, get the fake out. And then we'll get the recover off. Which should give us a little bit of a chance to close this one out. Because it's going to be difficult. Like, I'm not going to, like, I'm kidding no one. This is going to be difficult to close out. We've kind of burnt our... Um, a max turns and my opponent hasn't bent theirs, you know? So something like Charizard's in the back, it makes it it makes it very difficult to uh to kind of 
we could earthquake. We could earthquake. Uh, how many turns of trick room we've got left? We need to, to see. On. Um, because we still have our, um, we still do have. Hmm. Our air balloon. But it's likely that we're going to lose it here, you know? Well, we could just sacred fire. And then. Eerie impulse. Uh, we could just vault switch, you know, into Torkoal. If Raichu can survive this turn, I'm not confident we will. Okay, well, ally switch. Again, pulling it out. Pulling it out the bag. Yeah, I think we go down to a heat wave with Raichu. Oh no, Raichu taking it. So, Sacred Fire. Is it going to be enough? Yes, it is. Is Volt Switch going to be enough to get the Dragapult on the health that it's on? I don't think so. It'd be kind of nice if we... Ah, oh, we do. Okay, so if it is that Charizard coming in next, then we've got a chance because we've got Nuzzle that we can utilize on Raichu. Uh, and we still have the option. When we could maybe get proc our weakness policy, depending on what comes in. Dimensions turn back to normal, right? You sitting in a decent position. Uh, the great friend Charizard. Okay, well, it could be worse. It could be worse. We need to recover here, and we need to nuzzle. Is Eerie Impulse better than nuzzling, though? I think it probably is, you know. I think Eerie Impulse is probably the better option. Putting it down to minus two rather than minus two speed. It could come to backfire because critical hits can become a part of this. But, okay. The Protect here, super fine. Super fine. Because it gives it the opportunity for Hotter to get um, all the health it needs back. And I think that my opponent needs to really concentrate on getting rid of the Raichu before the Hotter. Um... The burn not going to take us down. I think we've got one more burn in us as well. So they need to take us down here. Um, be Brave Bird. Yeah, I don't really want a Brave Bird, you know. I want to cut her. Uh, uh, no, nah, I think we Brave Bird. I think we Brave Bird. If we get the Eerie Impulse off, I think we'll be fine. Because we just need to stall the max turns out, really. You know, that's the big thing for my opponent. Because they've got the max turns... The nice thing is, if they go for the G-Max Wildfire, the residual damage isn't going to be able to really dent hot or too much. We put it down to minus two as well. Uh, I don't think... Have they got the sun? I don't think they got the sun anymore. So, I think that helps us out a bunch. They're not going to be able to summon the sun. Eerie Impulse coming out and making things a heck of a lot easier for us. And then if we've got room the next turn, we can always... Um, Oh, we take that like a champ. That just tickles. <laughs> and right, you're going to be able to stick around for the next turn as well. So that is ideal. So we're going to be able to get the uh, the nuzzle off, recover. And then we're sitting in an amazing spot. Two HP. Oh, no, four. Four. Miscalculated. Uh, okay, we'll get the recover and we'll go for that nuzzle. You know what? I think Raichu as a support in pretty much most formats, it's, it's, it's allowed to kind of uh, be available and is so underrated. It's so underrated as a support Pokemon. I mean, nothing tells a story better than Wolf's uh, 2016 World Championships win, you know? Raichu in those sets and that team was amazing. And uh, we get to see it do a little bit of a little bit of something in this one, which is always nice to kick us off with the day. Very good game to my opponent, and we'll jump into our next game of today's episode. Okay, up next today, we've got a Metagross, Whimsicott, Incineroar, Virizion, Calyrex, Ice Rider, and Rotom Wash team. Very interesting team. You've got a nice Firewater Grass Core there, an interesting one that you don't generally see. Interchanging with the Grass type, obviously, we've got the Incineroar, Virizion, and Rotom, and then see the Whimsicott can kind of come in and cover the Grass slot for the Virizion when it's not... Um, so optimal. The thing that I would say here is you've obviously got a beat up combination with the Virizion that we need to be very careful of. Um, Virizion does get access to Stone Edge. So uh, that could be really problematic for us. I think initially we need to lead Raichu and we need to lead Ho-Oh because the problem with the, the, the Whimsicott coming out here 
and having it kind of a free beat up turn onto the the Verizian would shut things down for us super quickly uh, on our whole. Or what else do we need? What else do we need? We need probably hmm, Landorus. I think we definitely need Urshifu in this match. One hundred percent helps us deal with so much stuff. And maybe Rillaboom, you know, maybe Rillaboom, maybe Landorus. Is the Intimidate going to be useful? Probably, uh, but I feel like Rillaboom. Ah, it's tricky. It's tricky. Rillaboom doesn't have a great matchup against the Metagross, but yeah, I think we'll yeah, I think we'll go Landorus. Yeah, because Urshifu can help deal with the Rotom, and the Rotom isn't as much of a threat with Raichu because the Electric type attacks are kind of. It makes it a little more difficult for my opponent just to click that Thunderbolt or Max Lightning button, as long as Raichu's kind of on the field. So, let's see. Going to be tricky. Lots of things to think about. Keep in mind when we're playing um, and not kind of get a little bit complacent because that's always the, the way. We are going to see Verizian and Rotom come up for my opponent. Now we can stop a nasty plot here. We can just go... Hmm. Uh, uh, uh. I think we probably nuzzle and max lightning into the Verizian here. We need to. Because we can't allow the Verizian to max and get a max rock fall off. And it is it is four times weak to flying, so it should go down to the flying type attack. Unless it's got a sash. Which hopefully it hasn't. It does give the Rotom the opportunity to go for a nasty plot as well. So we need to be a little bit careful there. But we do have Eerie Impulse. We can kind of bounce back on the next turn. Yeah, I think we go Nuzzle and we go. Because we don't want to fake out into that slot in case of Verizian Maxes, which it quite possibly could. I think we're going to see that. Let's see. Does this plan work out? Because if we get this turn one right... Oh, wow. Wow. It's uh, Rotom going for the big old max, uh, which is fine. It's going to max Vortex into maybe even Raichu, you know. But I would say more likely to go into ho -Oh, which we should take. The rain's not up. We've got decent special defense. And it'll just proc our weakness policy. We'll get the speed boost as well. And then the next turn we've got... Eerie Impulse we, we can throw out onto the Rotom. The issue would be is if the Whimsical comes in with Tailwind, which could complicate things a little bit, but we'll see how we go. Nuzzle. There we go. Don't have a Lumberry. Whatever you do. Geyser. Yep. Big Geyser. Ooh. It's a nasty. It's a big old chunk of damage, isn't it? And the rain is going to get its self up onto the field uh, a weakness policy so there's no doubt even if it's got a cobra berry it's not surviving this it's no surviving life or brought and which is interesting um yeah now the problem like i say is that the the whimsical coming in and throwing up a tailwind which gives us a few issues but we do have the option where we could max guard and then eerie impulse into the rotten potentially but does my opponent pick up on that and target the Raichu instead. We'll see. They may not have brought the, the Wimmy though. Metagross is what we like to see. What we like to see all day long. Because we can go Eerie Impulse. Uh, I don't know if we... Uh, uh, I'd like to get rid of the rain. In all honesty, I would really like to get rid of the rain. But I don't know if I want to max Flare. Because the Rotom can only... The Rotom can only max Geyser. I wonder if an Eerie Impulse and then a Max Quake is a better option. It's just we'll probably end up procking um, a weakness policy on the Metagross this way. But we are plus two. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to get rid of this rain. We're going to Eerie Impulse. We're going to take minimal damage from this Rotom. And we're going to try and nuke this, this Metagross. We're not going to be picking up the knockout. I very much doubt it. Not on the rain. Very close though, very close. Now you have to get rid of the the Raichu if you are the Metagross now. But I think you're probably slower than Rotom, potentially. Yeah, with a more offensive Rotom, it makes a lot more sense. Now we should take minimal damage here. Minimal damage. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you love to see it, don't you? You do love to see it. Um, all right, well, taking a bit more chip. Earthquake coming out. We've got the air balloon, I think, on the uh, the old Raichu. 
because they're... <laughs> oh, what a cheese item. What a cheese item it is as well. And now we've got the opportunity to Eerie Impulse again. And I think this time we probably go for a Max Quake. Ah, uh, do we... Do we... Do we, do we just allow the rain to stay up? It just, I mean, it's my opponent got in the back that could potentially come in. Nothing with a ground resist. No, and it's likely that if anything comes in, I think it might be the Incineroar to get an Intimidate onto the whole. Also, if we can catch it with a Max Quake, you know, it helps. Rotom's on minus four now. Doesn't matter if the rain's up. It honestly doesn't. And I think the whole is pretty safe this turn. Getting the plus one's quite nice. Um, come on, Rotom. Tickle us. Tickle us a little more this turn. Come on. Let's see how much damage. We've let the rain go. We've let you have the rain. So let's see. Let's see how much you can do. Minus four. Kind of technically minus five. Uh, well, not minus five. It's a bit more than what I thought, but still, in the rain, taking it. Taking it like a champ, or oh, oh. and we got the opportunity now to recover off, go for another eerie impulse. The Rotom's locked in now; they've not got any options to switch it out, which is a uh, great, great for us, you know. Not so great for my opponent. Problem is, obviously, the Calyrex coming in makes it complicates things for us for sure, uh, and we don't have that super effective damage that we can kind of throw out onto it. And also, we have to worry about potentially a Trick Room, um, which is never. Never ideal. Um, what have we got in the back? Urshavu Landorus. Not ideal if a trick room goes up, and I will like be the first to admit that. Um, we need to burn onto the Calyrex. And I don't know if a recover is going to be what we kind of need. I mean... Let's Eerie Impulse the Rotom again. Do we recover just to take a Glacial Lance, which could be... I think we recover. I think we recover. We try and keep Horto alive. The Glacial Lance shouldn't take Horto down after we recover. And I don't think a Hydro Pump plus a Glacial Lance will be enough. Interesting that the Calyrex went before the Rotom as well. Oh my god, that does so much damage. Okay, that that's uh, a bit of a problem. Uh, chilling near boost, we don't like to see that. Uh, huh. And a dark pulse, we take this though. Keeps us in the game. Just about, just about. And now we can get Urshifu onto the field, which makes, gives me a little bit more, <sighs> makes me a bit more relaxed, uh, getting something like Urshifu out, uh, for sure. Because we can just double up into uh, the Calyrex. Yeah, because the Rotom at this point is like no threat to us whatsoever. We're just Sacred Fire and Wicked Blow. Okay. How dare you, Rotom, spoil our fun like this. Uh, the Wicked Blow will take it down, and we still got to turn to Wicked Blow the next turn. The problem is, though, uh, the Scarf on the uh, the old Calyrex is causing us a few issues, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't know if a Sucker Punch is going to be enough to take it down. Now, that's a problem because it goes to plus two now. Huh. Ah, uh, Ally Switch. Why have you ruined our fun? You didn't want the Rotom. We don't... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think we're going to be able to do this now. I don't think because Landorus just goes down. Uh, and Urshifu Sucker Punch will not be enough to get the. I don't think. I don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah, we just, we just, we just go down. Yeah. Oh, this is really disappointing. Scarfed. What the hell? What is this? What is this? We lose. We lose. We lose. Um, Ally Switch has saved my opponent's bacon there. Yeah. Scarfed Calyrex Ice Rider. Well, well, well. Fair play to my opponent. I didn't see it coming. Um, yeah, and that is it. Saved their bacon. There's one to look out for, friends. I'm not going to take... 
Ah, uh, you know what? I think the mistake was not getting the sun up. Well, we couldn't have got the sun up even if we tried because then the the, the, the max guys was always going to surpass, supersede us in the end. We needed to nuzzle with Raichu. We needed to nuzzle and not Eerie Impulse. That was the play. But then at that point, do you suspect that it's scarfed Calyrex? No, never at all. I want to have a look at the, 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 like the usage of scarf on Calyrex Ice Rider. Okay. Scoff is not even in, on the list of, of items. So, yeah. Anyway, best of one situations is always going to catch you out. Uh, but that's the ladder for you, isn't it? Anyway, very good game to my opponent. We'll hop over now and get you friends, the rental team. I'm a bit sad that we couldn't finish off with two wins today, but never mind. It happens sometimes, right? Okay, friends, here is the rental code for today's team. It is the ho -Oh team that we've been featuring today and had a lot of fun with. Honestly, I hope if you do try it out, you do enjoy it. I think it's a really good concept between the Lapras and the ho -Oh. Didn't really get a chance to see the Lapras today, uh, unfortunately, but I think it is kind of matchup specific where you're going to see that combination i do like the combination in general i think they complement each other very well obviously they have that conflict between who wants to max and who doesn't but i think ho -Oh can really perform well where it doesn't have to max especially if it's got screen support you've got the weakness policy there lapras helps disrupt a lot of the things that give you know, ho -Oh, a lot of issues and kind of vice versa. So they do work well in tangent together. You could even think if you want to adapt this team further in your own ways is think about maybe Perish Song on Lapras. It's definitely an option there rather than going for the, the full offensive kind of support like Clear Variant that I've went for here. I just feel like the screen support is really pivotal. But one takeaway from this is obviously that the Raichu and ho -Oh combination are just very strong together and they, they kind of complement each other to not end the the air balloon's a bit of a niche item because if you can see sash is on urshifu i think it's generally better fitted there and the the assault vest which would be another option you'd consider on raichu is is taken on the landerus which again is better on the landerus than the raichu and personally going uh, assault vest on raichu means that you don't have access to eerie impulse which we've seen through the games today how pivotal that can be as an option and uh, to just shut down end game situations or shut down those big dynamax pokemon that your opponent relies on so heavily anyway without going on further anymore i'm going to wrap it up there hope you enjoyed today's team just a reminder that the poker paste is down below in the description have a great rest of your day thank you as always for tuning in take care of yourselves and i'll catch you all for another episode very soon so until then as always take care and bye bye